If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hey everybody, welcome to the Recap Q&A show wherever you're hearing the sound of my voice, whether it be in the United States or across the globe. Welcome to the Recap Q&A show where I talk about questions that people have emailed me through YouTube, Facebook, uh, my email. If you want to contact me for the show, the quickest way is thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. And hopefully I can answer your question, if not directly through that email, then on the show, maybe both. Uh, also below in the description you'll find a bunch of links that accumulated on Facebook this past week, so if you're just interested in those, check those out. Uh, if not, you can just tap away and listen to the questions and the answers, and maybe a little rant or two at the end, and bring up the date on what's going on with the channel. Uh, and with that said, let's go ahead and get started. My first question is from Rude Vincent, R-O-O-D, Rude. He says, uh, hey Scott, I'm somewhat bad at writing scripts for a short story. Is there any any place online where I can find free scripts to shoot and direct? If so, where? This is a really good question because I've actually had several classes where one of the requirements were was that I was not allowed to write the script. Uh, so I'd have to find other versions and if I couldn't find one from a fellow student, um, for example, an example of this was Meredith, the short that I shot last year was written by a friend, but this semester my friend didn't have any scripts, so I went to a place online called simplyscripts.com, um, and there you can find unproduced films, there's a, there's a link to unproduced scripts, and there's another link after that to short scripts, and there you can peruse all kinds of screenplays that people have uploaded uh, that you can pick from. However, I will say that they still belong to those people, so you shouldn't just produce them. You should contact them and ask them if they, if you can produce uh, their script. Um, and they probably, I'm actually doing this currently right now with a script that I found, uh, and they will probably go ahead and let you do it, uh, most likely at no cost. However, they might ask for some compensation, and that's not um, unreasonable, so you might want to offer them something, something, you know, it's a short script, offer them uh, a little bit, $5, $10, I don't know. If you're in love with the script, maybe more. But those scripts are out there, and I'm sure that uh, they would probably are going to be thrilled uh, to get their script produced. Maybe you can send them a link to something that you've done previously to show them that, uh, give them an example of what their script might look like. Um, if they say no, or there's like I said, there's tons of short scripts there, ask somebody else. Um, uh, uh, that's the main place that I found, and if anyone else knows of any other uh, online resources for short scripts or feature length scripts where people can look, um, please leave a comment below. <clears throat> All right. Next, I have something from uh, Pima Best Bestin or Bestin in really small type. I don't know why it printed out so small, but it <laughs> it is like micro micro type. All right, Pima says. I'm on an extremely tight budget, and I'm wondering what your opinion is on this microphone. It leaves me a link, and it's that uh, microphone that you'll find all over eBay. It's from China. It's a boom mic. It's about $25. I'll leave a link below also to the microphone. And says, uh, he's asking for my opinion on the mic. Uh, and also, how do I go about recording the audio from the microphone? Can I plug it into my MacBook? If so, what program can I use? Uh, I have never actually used this microphone. It's fairly popular. I mean, they're inexpensive. They're a boom mic, um, and boom mics are great for recording sound. I, haven't, I don't have personal experience with this microphone. If you do, you know, leave a comment below uh, to let Pima know. Uh, I've thought about getting one. I mean, I use a pretty, I kind of use a, a medium grade uh, Sennheiser ME66, which is pretty fancy for a low budget, sort of micro budget productions, but it's a really good microphone. And I still have it. It's over 10 years old. It, there's no moving parts in it, so it really should never wear out. Um, but I don't know about this microphone. However, I do believe in the old adage that uh, even a cheap microphone pl placed in the right spot is much better than an expensive microphone placed in the wrong spot. So if you're shooting dialogue, make sure that you get the microphone, the shotgun microphone, as close to the, t the actor's mouth as possible. You can check your, uh, your boom line before the shot, meaning the audio guy will dip the, the boom uh, into the shot and the director of photography will tell him to raise it until it's gone, until he can't see it anymore. So get as close as you can with this microphone. Again, I've never used it, this specific one, uh, but I've heard decent things about it. I mean, it's not, obviously for $25, it's not going to be the same as a $400 microphone, 
but if you it's designed to have a long throw pattern for, uh, which is great for shooting dialogue because you're, you're out of frame but you can still reach their mouths as opposed to like something with a more omnidirectional pattern uh, like a lav mic or a stick mic something like that which isn't really made to be out of frame it's made to be really really close to the actor's mouths where shotguns you can back up a little bit and still get record decent audio so again if anyone has uh, their opinion on that mic um, please share it below and maybe something I will do in the future is buy one of these and then compare them to my Sennheiser and run some tests and you can kind of see what you're going to get again you're probably not going to get it's not going to be stupendous but um, it's going to be probably halfway decent. I mean, I use a cheap lav mic, and because I'm using it with a, my Zoom H1, it sounds pretty good. Oh, and Pete was asking about how to record audio. If you don't have a dedicated sound recorder like the Zoom H1, the Tascam DR05, and this is an unbalanced mic, although it does have an XLR uh, cable in the in the picture, so I'm kind of curious uh, how, they would, how, how that would sound, because XLR is always sound better than an unbalanced mic. Uh, anyway, if you're going to use your MacBook to record, which I don't really recommend because the microphone electronics in a laptop are going to be just as cheap as a microphone electronics in, say, a camcorder or a mic input, and you're always going to get some kind of hiss and it's not going to sound that great. Um, but if that's your only way to record sound, it's definitely better than the on-camera microphone, and I would recommend a program like Audacity, which is free and runs on any platform, and you can record uh, sound into it. And I'll leave the link to that below. Um, all right, Russell Verisco writes and says, "Have you ever considered or thought of a way to get aerial shots? Always, that's very that raises your production value way up if you can get an aerial shot." He like says he likes the, my crane, but he wants higher shots, 10 to 30 feet, and moving like a copter. I was considering a small blimp-like balloon, something a little stable with guide wires or ropes. It has to be small enough to transport, maybe uh, three three to five foot long maybe a $200 budget. Um, I, you know, I think the blimp idea or the balloon idea is pretty good. Uh, I've heard of uh, people uh, finding someone who owns like an ultralight or something like that, paying them some small fee, attaching their camera to the ultralight and having them do aerial shots that way. Of course, not all of us are going to know someone who owns an ultralight or some kind of aircraft, small aircraft, but uh, I like the balloon idea and it's definitely a good idea for a show. Uh, I will look into that. Um, I noticed the quadcopters are dropping in price. You can find them on, on eBay. And uh, that's sort of a, seems to be a booming uh, DIY thing right now is to get a quadcopter that's a little re remote control helicopter with four propellers and uh, attaching a camera like a GoPro to it, pointing it straight down, getting some aerials that way. I think that's an awesome idea. But again, that's a kind of expensive. You have a $200 budget, so. Uh, maybe a quadcopter, you might be able to afford that versus, of course, I don't have no idea on the process, the prices of quadcopters, but maybe if someone does, they can chime in. Or if you have any other ideas that might help Russell, please comment below. I'm definitely going to look into the blimp idea or the balloon. I think that's a great one. Um, great idea. And uh, I'll check it out. So that's all the, all the questions from this week. Uh, and that actually, that last question leads into our question for the show, which is how would you do an aerial shot? Again, Russell's saying it needs to be above, you know, uh, higher than what a crane will do, because a crane will go, you know, 10 to 15 feet. The frugal crane will do that. Um, but if you want something higher, how would you do it? How would you do an aerial shot uh, for as little money as possible? Uh, please share. If you have a question you'd like to see on this show, please send it to thefrugalfilmmaker at gmail.com. You can also comment on YouTube or send me a message some other way. But that's your best shot of getting on the show getting your question right on the show. You can also check out all the Frugal Filmmaker stuff at thefrugalfilmmaker.com. There's always the Facebook group, which is continuing to grow, and Twitter, which is at Frugal Filmmaker. All right, in just a couple of minutes here, I just wanted to sort of share what was going on with the channel. Um, I wished I had more time to write for the blog. I feel kind of bad. I've been neglecting writing for the blog because I just haven't had any time. This is my last uh, academic semester at grad school, which means... All the coursework is almost, almost over before I start making my thesis film, which I'm excited about. I've got a 24-page script that I, I have started producing, which I have a producer, uh, and I'm working with a concept artist right now to get some sketches done. You'll probably see those on the blog as well as in uh, any kind of crowdfunding video that I, if I decide to produce one um, for it. Uh, another thing I wanted to talk about briefly was the numbers on the channel. 
Right now I'm at 43,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Thank you very much, subscribers and viewers. And I just wanted to share one stat with you, which is um, it took me the very first year to get to 1,000 subscribers. For sure I did this. I went from zero to 1,000. It took me exactly one year, which was my goal. Now things are growing so well that I'm getting 1,000 subscribers every week. I'm averaging about 130 subscribers right now uh, daily. Um, views or something, or over 7,000 views a day, which isn't viral at all, I realize, but it's kind of cool. Uh, it's kind of neat to see some modest success there and growth. And uh, if you're ever curious about how, how this channel or any other channel is doing, you can always go to socialblade.com and type in any YouTube channel, and you can see all of their numbers, at least for, uh, within a month. Um, I think that's, uh, that's pretty neat. But that's how this channel, The Frugal Filmmaker, is doing. So I thank you for all your patronage support and watching, and uh, I guess I'll keep doing it. Why not? <laughs> Seems to be working.